In this video, we are going to discuss top 5 coding questions often asked in Python interviews. This is part of our ongoing interview question series where we are bringing Python conceptual and coding interview questions to you. To gain access to all of our free data science learning material, consider subscribing to our channel. On this note, let's begin. In this question, we'll show you how to find the square root of a number. First, let's understand what square root is. The square root of a number is a value that when multiplied by itself gives you the original number. For example, the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 multiplied by itself equals 9. Now let's see how we can find the square root of a number in Python. Alright, first we'll see how to find the square root of positive numbers. At the beginning, we uh, take an input from the user and uh, convert that particular input number into a float. Then we calculate the square root of the entered number using the exponentiation operator or power operator. Using this, we simply raise the input number to the power of 0.5, uh, which is equivalent to uh, taking the square root. Finally, the result is printed up to three decimal places. Let's run the code and see what we get. Let's say we want to calculate uh, square root for 25. And as you can see, our program is returning the square root of 25, which is 5. Now next up, we'll see how to find the square root of a complex number. For this, first we will import uh, a Python module called CMath with this line of code. Uh, CMath basically provides function for working with complex numbers in Python. Why are we doing this? It's essential for calculating the square root of complex numbers. Thereafter, we define the uh, variable num with a real part, which is this and uh, the imaginary part, which is this. Over here, J represents the imaginary unit in Python. After that, we make uh, provision for the user to input the number as well, if that is how uh, you want the input to be like. Thereafter, this cmat square root function is called to calculate the square root of the complex number. The result is stored in the variable num square root and finally printed. Now let's see how this works. As you can see, we are able to compute the square root of a complex number with this. All right, in this question, we'll write a Python program to interchange the first and last element of a list. Before we begin, let's understand what a list is in Python. Lists are built in data structures that are used to store collections of data. Lists are mutable, which means they can be modified after being created. Uh, this basically means that we can add, remove, change elements from a list even after when it is created. Lists are uh, defined using square brackets. Now let's see how we can interchange elements in a list. For this, first of all, we are uh, declaring an empty list with the name A. Thereafter, we ask the user how many elements are to be kept in the list. Uh, we'll keep four elements, let's do that. So I'll just say we want to keep four elements in our list. Thereafter, we have a for loop here. This loop iterates n times. n basically is the number of elements we declared, which is four. So in this step, we'll be prompted four times to declare the four elements of this list. Let's uh, keep it simple. I'll just say one, two, three, and four. Uh, by the way, you may also uh, feed uh, string values rather than numbers. So now just to see how our uh, uh, list looks like, we can print it. This is how it looks. Now to swap between first and last element, basically this one and four, uh, we use this line of code. Over here, we basically say the first element, last element equals last element and then first element. By the way, guys, just so you know, this technique is only specific to Python. It's not a generalized uh, technique for all programming languages. Uh, if you want to go with a traditional approach, uh, we may also use a variable called tempt. Uh, wherein we may store the first element in tempt, then uh, store the uh, last element in the first and then uh, dump the temp uh, value in the last uh, sort of element. This is sort of a traditional approach that we can take as well. Anyways, as a final step, we print a message indicating that a new list is about to be displayed and uh, print the modified list. Let's run this code and see what we get. As you can see, the numbers have gotten swapped. Now let's move on to the next question. Checking for leap year is a very common question asked in interviews. Let's understand what a leap year is. First of all, a leap year is a calendar year that contains an additional day compared to a common year. This means a leap year has 366 days instead of the usual 365. 
Now, every year that is uh, exactly divisible by 4 is a leap year. However, except for years that are exactly divisible by 100, these are uh, centurial years. These centurial years are leap years if they are exactly divisible by 400. For example, the years 1700, 1800 and 1900 are not leap years, but years 1600 and 2000 are indeed leap years. Now let's see how to calculate uh, a leap year in Python. As a very first step, the code takes an uh, integer input from the user representing the year to be checked. Then uh, we check if the year is a century year and is divisible by 400. If both conditions are true, the year has to be a leap year. Next up, we check if uh, the year is not a century year, but is divisible by four. If both conditions are true, again, the year is considered a leap year. If the year does not meet the conditions specified in the above two conditions, it is not a leap year and then the else part is executed. Based on the year, uh, the output uh, says whether the number is leap year or not. Let's run the code and see it in action. Let's try 2024. As you can see, we are indeed in a leap year right now. This question here is how to use a Python program to check whether the given number is an Armstrong number or not. Uh, let's first understand what an Armstrong number is. An Armstrong number is a number that is uh, equal to the sum of the cubes of its own digits. For example, uh, this 153 is an Armstrong number because uh, 1 raised to power 3, 5 raised to power 3 and 3 raised to power 3 equals 153, which is the number itself. Now let's see how you can write a Python program to check if a number is an Armstrong number. For this, again, we take an input from the user. The number has to be an integer. Uh, this is followed by initializing a variable sum to store the sum of the cube of uh, each digit. Then we create a temporary variable and assigns the value of num to it. This is done to preserve the original value of num for uh, later comparison. Thereafter, we initiate a while loop that uh, continues as long as uh, temporary variable uh, temp is greater than zero. Inside the while loop, we extract the last digit uh, of the current uh, value of temp using this modulus operator. Then we add the cube of uh, the extracted digit to the variable sum that we declared above. And finally, we remove the last digit from the current value of temp. For example, let's say uh, we declare uh, the input value as 153. So as first step from 153, this particular line of code will uh, extract 3, which is the last digit. Thereafter, with this second line of code, that 3 will be raised to the power 3. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So sum becomes 27. And thereafter, with this third line of code, we are doing floor division that uh, removes the last digit 3. And we are left with a uh, temporary number of 15. Now we check if num is equal to sum. Uh, it means that the number is an Armstrong number. And if it is not, the number is not Armstrong. Let us run the code now and uh, check its functionality. Let's insert 153, which is indeed an Armstrong number. And we get 153. Another number we can try is 1. Uh, 1 raised to power 3 is again 1. So it should be an Armstrong number as well. So that's about it. Let's move on to the last question. This question asks to write a Python program to check whether a string is palindrome or not. So you may ask, what is a palindrome? Well, a palindrome is a word, number, phrase, or other uh, sequence of symbols that read the same backwards as forwards. For example, words such as madam, race car are palindromes. Now let us look at the program to check if a given string is a palindrome. So to do that, first of all, we ask the user to enter a string and uh, store its value in this variable myString. Thereafter, we are calling this method casefold onto our uh, input string to uh, reduce it to lowercase so that it is suitable for uh, caseless comparison. Thereafter, we use the reverse function to reverse the string and uh, store it in this uh, second variable called reverse string. As last step, we check if both the strings are equal. If they are, we print uh, this particular statement that the string is a palindrome. Otherwise, we say the string is not a palindrome. Now let's uh, see this code in action. Let me first pick uh, this word EYEI. -E and as we can see, it's a palindrome. 
Now, just for uh, validation, let's pick up another body part, ear. And as we can see, it is not a palindrome. So our code is working fine. So guys, this is all we had for you today. If you have any uh, questions specific to the problems we discussed, do uh, put them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Subscribe to our channel for more interesting data tech content. See you in the next video. Goodbye.